friends, happy Thursday. It's Pastor Karen here with a Thoughtful Thursday. Um, it's February and it's um, Black History Month. And um, I don't know about your email inbox, but I've been getting a lot of emails and um, even Facebook posts um, reminding us about Black History Month and how important it is for us to really elevate the um, history that we might not have learned um, in our classrooms as young people. Um, and certainly not the history that we talk about every day. And so um, I have been spending some time in some devotions about Black History Month and um, really trying to see how I might be able to discipline myself um, in the month of February. And so I decided that um, I wanted to kind of understand for myself, maybe theologically or, you know, from a biblical standpoint, um, why it's so important for us to be telling um, telling stories, right? And understanding the history, which is what history really is, right? Like it's the telling of stories. It's the telling of what has happened previous, um, what's happened in the past, and then maybe how does that relate to today? Um, so I, you know, certainly was at first um, drawn to Galatians um, 3.28 that says, you know, lots of translations, right? It says, now in Christ, it doesn't matter if you're Greek or Jew or slave or free or male or female, you're all the same in Christ Jesus. Uh, maybe a translation that you're more familiar with says, um, there is neither Greek, Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And that just reminds me of how... Um, you know, God created us, right? All in God's image, all in the image of the divine, all to be one in Christ. God, um, you know, God came to this earth incarnate in Christ so that he could show us how to live in community, how to live with each other, um, and how we all matter. <laughs> um, Jesus was so clear about that. Even the folks who people didn't think mattered. Those are the folks that matter to Jesus. Um, all of us matter to God and all of us are important and all of our stories make up the story of God on earth, right? Um, that's, that's the story. We look at the Bible and it's, it's full of stories, right? Stories about people and their, their, their interactions with God, their interactions with each other. You know, some give us good examples and some give us not so good examples, but still we read the stories of real people. And so as I reflected on that and I thought, oh my goodness, like I don't, I don't know a lot of stories about African American people, you know, short of the ones that we hear about all of the time. So I made a commitment that each week I was going to try to read, you know, several stories about um, people's African Americans, black people people who, whose stories I might not know and do a little digging. I can't share like everyone's whole stories with you and all of the thing that I read, but maybe you too want to do that. So I thought I would pick three today um, and share those three with you and maybe they'll pique your interest and you'll want to do a little bit more reading about these folks. Um, you know, Black History Month certainly can, we can take any piece of history, any part of history, any you know, part of our culture. And so clearly I, I, ch I chose like the religious part, right? So looking at, um, at, uh, black history from a per religious perspective or from a spiritual church perspective. Um, so I picked, I picked three people and, and there's lots of websites and things that you can find and you can dig in deeper and deeper and deeper and, and read, um, and read more and more. Um, but here's some people that I found. So this first, um, gentleman's name is Augustus Tolton. Um, and he was a former slave, um, but he was the first Catholic priest in the United States who was publicly known as black. Um, he didn't study the priesthood in the United States. He had to go to Rome to study the priesthood. And he was ordained in 1886. <laughs> he was 31 years old. And then he returned to the United States um, and he served the black community in Chicago as the priest. Um, actually the Archdiocese of Chicago in 20, in 2010, um, opened his, his canonization process. Um, and in 2019, Pope Francis, um, officially confirmed his heroic virtue, he said. 
um, putting him on his path to eventual sainthood. So here's um, a, a, a slave, a previous slave who became a priest in 1886. What a great story. Um, and then we have probably a name that you might recognize, Howard Thurman, a philosopher, a theologian, an educator. Um, he co-founded San Francisco's Church for the Fellowship of All Peoples in 1944. He, it was the first integrated interfaith religious congregation in the United States. Um, in 1953, he was, um, he was called the spiritual godfather of the civil rights movement. Um, and he became the dean of the Marsh Chapel at Boston University. And so he was the first black dean at a mostly white American university. Um, and he mentored all kinds of people, including Martin Luther King Jr. Um, as Martin Luther King Jr. was trying to understand what his thoughts are were about nonviolence and how he was working to develop that philosophy in his life. So really cool. We're going to go back just a little bit further. And here's another name that if you're United Methodist, you might recognize. Hopefully you do from your United Methodist history. Um, but Richard Allen, he was a minister, an educator, a writer, um, and likely one of the most active and influential black leaders of his time. In 1794, he founded the African Methodist Episcopal Church, the AME Church. And at the time, the Methodist Episcopal Church brought the AME Church underneath kind of the umbrella of the Methodist Church. Um, but this was the first um, independent black denomination in the United States. Um, and he opened the first AME Church, 1794, right here in Philadelphia. You can actually still see it. It's called Mother Zor. Um, Mother Bethel Church um, in Philadelphia. You can tour it. I've been there before. I highly recommend going. The, the, the museum is amazing. Um, a really great, a really great um, resource right here in our backyard if you're listening to me in Philadelphia, in the Philadelphia area. Um, so he, Richard Allen was elected bishop in 1816 um, and he really wanted to create a denomination for black people who could worship without any racial oppression um, when we're enslaved people because we still had slaves right in 1816 <laughs> and he wanted them to be able to worship with some kind of level of dignity right um, he really worked hard to upgrade the social status of the black community he organized schools to teach literacy and promoted national organizations to develop political strategies so here was a person who, you know, created a whole denomination, but also still fought so hard to make sure that we were doing, that he was doing things to create um, equity in the community, right? By, by building schools and working with the, the local politicians. So, um, so those are my three for, for this week. I also ordered a book this week about Harriet Tubman and the Underground Railroad. Um, so that's going to be one of the five books that I read in February. So I'm excited for that um, to arrive so I can start reading that. One of the other things that I committed to in February was to um, change some of my prayer life and really look for some very pointed prayers, um, both to center myself on this, um, the whole idea of Black History Month and all of the social justice and, and racism and racist issues that we're dealing with in our society today. Um, and I thought if I could focus my prayer life, um, that I could speak to God about, you know, the, the challenges and where I, um, might have a, a role and what kind of action I can take. And so, uh, you know, I'll be honest, I wasn't really sure exactly what to pray. So I did do some more research and I found this really great prayer. Um, it's a little bit challenging. Um, it certainly is a prayer that I will be praying for this month. So I hope that you will join me. Um, if you're interested in having a copy of this prayer, you can just let me know. I'm happy to shoot you an email um, with a copy of this prayer. But let's end our time today um, committing ourselves to praying for, for Black History Month and for all that that means. Um, for all that um, kind of platform, it allows us to have this this month to, to talk about Black history and to talk about how the the same issues that we were talking about in the 17 and 1800s, and even before then, we're still talking about those same issues in 2022 um, and how maybe we are the generation that can um, move forward. We are the generation who can speak up and speak out um, 
and we will ask God to help us. So um, pray with me today and um, let's honor Black History Month and let's be open to God's encouragement and God's um, prodding and God's guidance and God's leading um, to what it is that we all can do to end racism, to end oppression, to end social injustice. So let's pray together. Oh, spirit of abundance, God of grace, mother of hope, we pause now to remember those stories that are all around us, but so often passed over. Those stories that when told are, we are shared because of some, because of what someone is, not who they are. This month in our nation's character is Black History Month. Help us to realize that black history is all our histories. May the day come when these stories are so wildly taught that no month need be separately divided. We know this day will not come until we as people make different choices. We pray now for those new choices. May we come to see a day where the prison, prison, prison system becomes redemptive, not punitive. A day where the legal system learns to focus on more squarely on the facts and not the color of our skin. A day where our schools are as well funded as the needs demand. May our role models be allowed to excel when they thrive and not be taken down for their rich heritage. We know this will require a shift in power. And this can be scary for some. Give those full of fear hope that we come to know grace so that our hearts will not be hardened to the pain around us. There are so many beautiful stories needing to be told and we need to get the chance to hear them widen our vision so that the history that is shared this month and every month come to be known as our history too. We are most human when we see the humanity in others. In Jesus name. Amen.